Assalamu alaikum. We are going to start with the fourth uh, lecture in this course. And this course is, uh, and uh, this lecture is about uh, the math library that is normally used uh, when we are doing some mathematical calculations. Uh, the math library has uh, a lot of functions like uh, uh, calculating the value of pi, calculating absolute value calculating square roots, calculating cube roots, calculating uh, sine, uh, cos, and tan values. So, uh, uh, so knowing a few of these uh, values is very beneficial uh, when you are uh, when you are writing programs. So, we are going to learn a, a bit about the math library, and we are also going to learn a bit about uh, the different uh, comparison operators that are used to compare the values together and uh, and once uh, this is done uh, I believe that you guys will be uh, ready to look into uh, some advanced concepts and the concepts of uh, conditionals and loops so I believe that you will be all set to do those uh, advanced topics and but uh, before doing that uh, understanding of these concepts is uh, extremely important uh, I should apologize that uh, I have a sore throat so uh, it's likely that you might not understand uh, a few things uh, but I'll try my best to uh, make this uh, video uh, a good experience for all of you so the Java math library defines the square root function, the trigonometric functions, the, logarith the logarithmic and exponential functions and other common functions for floating point numbers. Uh, when we say floating point number it means the float uh, data type and the double data type. Uh, to use any one of these functions in an expression, you, you type the name of the function followed by its argument in parentheses. For example, uh, if you want to uh, take a root of, uh, the of 2, so you will have to write math.squareRoot and then in the, in the parentheses you have to pass the argument 2. It will give us uh, the root, uh, the square root of the value 2. Then um, uh, we have uh, uh, these uh, typical calls for the library for the Java library methods. So these are very f uh, common calls that we make. So, for example, if you write integer dot parse int, so the the library will uh, expect the value. Uh, so the library we, we will be using is the integer. The return type is going to be integer and the value will be 1 to 3. So over here we are passing a string value, but the value we are getting here is 1 to 3. Uh, so over here we are using the library double. So we are passing a double value which is 1.5 and the value we will get will be 1.5. Now in this case we have uh, 5 square and uh, from 5 square which will be 25 and we are subtracting from it the 4 square which is 16 so 25 minus 16 gives us 9 and the square root of 9 is 3 so that's why we get the value 3 over here and uh, uh, similarly you can uh, you can see like this is the Euler's number so if you take the log of the Euler's number the natural log you will get a 1 uh, if you want to get a random value so you write uh, math dot random so you always get a value between 0 and 1 so it's a it's a double value it will always start from 0 go to 1 so it will, can be 0 0.12 0 0.56 so that's this is what this returns um, so if I want to round the value so over here we are, I have a value of pi if I want to round the, round the value of this uh, value I can just use math dot round and it, it will give me 3 and finally if I use math.max so if I want to find two values the, the maximum value between 1 and 9 so I will get a 9 over here now over here we can see like okay it's obvious that 9 is the maximum value but what may happen that 
uh, you may pass variables over here and you want to find out like which variable has uh, uh, has the bigger value now if you want to get more details you can get those get those details from page 31 of your textbook so the math library also defines the constant values math.py and math.e uh, for e which you can use in your programs the value of math.sign math.py by 2 is 1 so math.py is uh, the value 180 if you uh, well in here it's uh, 3.14 you divide by 2 uh, and you take the sign value of that so you know that uh, the value of pi is 180 if you divide by 2 you get a 90 and if you make sign of 90 you will get uh, a 1 but, in, but over here everything is in the radians so so you get the math.pi by 2 which will be a value and that will be the radian value and that radian value is equal to 1 and again if you take the math.log of Euler's number you will get a 1 uh, math.sign uh, takes the argument in radians uh, so uh, as we were discussing over here uh, and the math.log implements the natural log logarithmic like function So one of the primary uh, rules of modern programming is that you should always be aware of the type of data you your program is processing. Only by knowing the type uh, can you know precisely which set of values each variable can have, which literals you can use and which operations you can perform. So uh, what this means is that you need to understand like what value you are uh, working with. So if you have a double value and you have an integer value, you need to understand like whatever the calculations you are doing uh, does it use a double value, does it use an integer value it's very important, you will see like with a few examples like what I mean by that uh, so but you can convert one value into another so there are two types of conversions the first is the implicit con conversion, the second is the explicit conversion uh, so you can use an int value wherever a double value is expected because Java automatically converts the integers to doubles when appropriate. So over here I have 11 into 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is a double value. 11 is an integer value. So it will consider uh, 11 as a double value instead of an integer value. So it will consider this as 11.0. So, so thus uh, 11 is converted to a double and then the result of dividing two doubles is a double. So you the result you will get is going to be a double. you will say like uh, it's multiplies over here but uh, the result of dividing two doubles so it's, it's actually 1 by 4 so you are dividing 11 by 4 uh, and then the Java has uh, some built-in type conversion conventions for primitive types that you can take advantage of when you are aware that you might lose information So, so whenever you want to convert uh, one uh, value into another, you do uh, something which is called type casting. You cast one variable into another variable. So, an example of that is here. So, the expression is uh, two point seven one at eight two eight. So, I want to convert into an integer. So, I just write an integer over here. So, this value is cast from double to an integer. So, uh, so over here it will not make it three it will make it 2 so it will lose uh, the floating point over here and you will be left with the value 2 that is considered an implicit conversion now we move on to the explicit conversion and uh, we have done the explicit conversion before so I'll jump uh, right uh, to the conversion oh I haven't given the example so uh, we can see that you can use integer.parseInt so you, if you parse if you pass uh, an integer value here, it will convert that value into an integer value. Uh, so, so this can be used to convert one value into another. Uh, and then there's uh, another method like the method method round that takes a double argument and returns uh, a long result. So, if you want to round some value, so suppose it's two point five six seven so it will round it 
and it will make it like 2.2 and the, what the value that is returned is going to be double, it's not going to be an integer. So booleans, we come across booleans. Uh, a boolean uh, type representation uh, represents two th truth values from the logic. So what, me what this means is that if something is a boolean, you will either get a true value or a false value. Uh, so whenever there's a boolean expression, so the result is either true or false. So that you please keep that in mind. So, f uh, so for example, so the the most important functions uh, that define a boolean are uh, uh, first of all and uh, you express it using that double ampersand sign uh, or uh, or this one. So you either uh, or you have the or and you represent it by these two bars and then there's a not symbol which is used to be uh, which is ex uh, like sh which is uh, represented by this uh, exclamation mark so uh, uh, a and b so this expression a and b is only true if both a and b are true so if it means like if a is true and b is true then the com then both of them combined will give you uh, a true value but if A is false and B is true, it will give you a false value. If B is false, A is true, then it will again will give you a false value. And both are false, then it will again give you a false value. Uh, the OR is, is, is works a bit differently. Uh, in, in For OR, any one of these values need to be true for it to be a true. For what this means is that if A is true and B is false, the expression will return a true value. Similarly, if uh, B is true and A is false, the expression will again return a true value. If both of them are true, it will return a true, but if both of them are false, the expression is a false. And now if you have, uh, suppose a variable which has a true value, and you put a not in front of it, so it will automatically make this expression a false expression. Uh, if it is false, then you can put a not in front of it, it will make it a true expression. Um, now you have some other uh, mixed type operators uh, that take operands of one type and produce a result of another type. So these operands are these ones. So, so over here we have the double equal to sign. So this is this is used for comparison. So if A is equal to B. So normally if you write A is equal to B, it means like the value of B will go into A. So, but if you want to do a comparison, you have to put a, put a double equal to sign. So this makes, uh, it this compares A is equal to B. So suppose A is 5 and B is also 5 and you use this expression. So since 5 is equal to 5, so this expression A is equal to B will return us a true value. Similarly, A is 5 and B is 6. So A is not equal to B. So A is 5, B is 6, A is not equal to B. So the expression again will return us a true value. And then uh, this will, if A is smaller than B, then it will give us a true value. If A is smaller or equal to B, it will give us a true value. And same goes with this one, it's if A is greater than B, and if A is greater or equal to B. So, so these uh, can be used for different uh, data types, but they will return us uh, an answer in either a true or a false. So now we move on towards uh, the code review. I will show you a few examples, and uh, you can uh, understand from with these examples um, what I mean by comparison and what these be boolean values mean. Um, now this example has been taken from the book itself. Um, uh, I have named it as uh, example one, and uh, I have saved this file as example one dot Java. So. Uh, what's happening in this example is that I've defined the main function. Uh, so whenever I run this code, I will need to pass an argument to this function. Uh, so what this function does is, uh, whatever uh, string value I pass, it will convert that into an integer value and store it as the year value. And uh, this is a boolean which stores whether the uh, the result of the expression if it is either true or false. 
So let's uh, check this uh, first expression. So it says that year m per year percentage 4 is equal to 0. So this symbol, the percentage symbol, uh, this is actually used as a remainder in programming. So what this means is that if the year is 5, and if I divide 5 by 4, I will get a 1 because 1 is the remainder and which is not equal to 0. Since 1 is not equal to 0, so is leap year will become uh, false. Now if the year is 4, so 4 divided by 4 will give me a 0. So this expression will become true. So is leap year will become true. Uh, similarly, uh, you can, if uh, the year is 12, so 12 divided by 4, again it com divides it completely, there is no remainder, so we get a 0 over here, and 0 is equal to 0, so again is leap year is true. Now we have to make a few more checks, which uh, verifies like whatever the year we are passing, it's actually a leap year. Uh, so so first of all what it does is it divides the function uh, divides uh, uh, the year with 4 and is leap year becomes true so it says okay by this calculation if this is calculation is true and whatever the year is uh, and it is completely divisible by 100 uh, oh uh, if this is true and if I divide the year by 100 and that does not uh, become equal to 0 so then this expression will become true so if both of these expressions are true there's an and in between so is leap year will become true and over here it checks like after doing these checks whatever the leap year we have which is true in this case and I'm using an R so if the year is divided by 400 again gives me a 0 so then again this is going to be a leap year so what so what this means is that either this expression is true or this expression is true the year will be a leap year and so it will write system dot out print ln and in this case it will be a leap year so these are the checks that you can make in order to make you know check if certain year is a leap year so now we move on to the command prompt and uh, we first of all compile uh, example 01 dot java and now it is compiled and now I will run example 01 and I pass it the value suppose uh, 400 so it returns me of true value I run this program again I pass it 1900 it returns me a false value so so uh, so we can check if uh, 1900 if I divide it by 4 so I will I will have I will write like it's going to be 16 and we are going to get a 30 so we are going to get 7 and that way we will uh, we will get uh, 28 28 30 divided by 28 uh, like if we subtract 28 from 30 we will get a 2 and 2 is complete complete and 2 and 0 is completely divided divisible by 4 and we get a 5 so So if we uh, it's uh, so 1900 is completely divisible uh, by 4. So this uh, becomes true. Now this is true, and if the year uh, is completely, uh, and we if we divide the year by 100, and we uh, we get zero. So by this expression we shouldn't get a zero we should get something else so if we divide the year by 100 and we do not get a zero it means like that that year is not a leap year so 1900 isn't a leap year so 
So this expression, so this was true, but this expression makes it a false expression. So if you have a two expression and a false expression, uh, and you have and in between, so the complete expression becomes a false expression. So is leap year becomes false. Now, if you have you have false over here, and 1900 is not completely divisible by f y 400. So again. Uh, this expression is false and this expression is false so it gives us uh, false as the uh, as the answer now if I use uh, same thing and if I use uh, 2020 again it tells us like this current year was a leap year and that's how we can uh, find out like if a certain year is a leap year by using this program now we move on to example number two so this example uh, is about uh, the Pythagoras theorem. Uh, so we have a tri triangle, a right angle triangle, and uh, we have its length as 4, and we have its height as 3. So we have 4 in this direction, 3 in this direction. So if I want to find out the hypotenuse, you know that I have to square the length, I have to square the height, add them together. So in this case, the length was 16, uh, and like the square of the length was 16, and the square of the height was 9. 16 plus 9 gives us 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. Now you can see, like I have uh, explicitly cast it as an integer. So, so this uh, function actually returns us a double value, and then I convert that double value into an integer value. And then when I use system dot out dot print, so it just prints the integer value over here. It doesn't print the double value. So uh, let's compile uh, this. So I compile example two dot Java, and then I use uh, Java uh, example zero two, and it returns me the value five. And you can see that this is an integer value. So you can see like we I have uh, used uh, the library to find the square root but this function returns me a double value and I I want to convert that value into, into an integer value so that I can save that value in the hypotenuse variable. So I use the int type casting so it converts 5.0 into 5 and then it prints out the 5 value. So again this is uh, an example of how we can use a math library to solve uh, problems, uh, solve easy problems and it makes our life easy. Now this is example number three and this example is about uh, calculating the uh, area of a circle uh, which has a certain radius and uh, uh, I have uh, and I can also calculate the volume so I use the volume formula over here and this should uh, so the first line should return me the area of the circle and the second line should return to me the area of sphere now I again open the command prompt I compile example 3 and I press enter so uh, the, the code is uh, compiled so I write Java example 3 and I pass it the value 1. So pi r square means like I have the value uh, of pi which is 3.14. r is 1 so I will get 3.14. Uh, now if I press enter you can see like the area of circle is 3.14 as I had predicted. But there is a problem. The problem is that the area, the volume of the sphere cannot be 3.14. Uh, why that is because uh, I have 1 as radius 1 as radius so the cube of 1 is 1 I multiply it with pi so I get 3.14 into 1 again 3.14 but over here I have 4 which is divided by 3 so I will uh, so this is like 1.33333 multiply the value multiply by the value of pi uh, but over here it's not doing that so, so the problem is that when I divide 4 by 3, the 4 is considered to be uh, uh, a double value, uh, sorry, uh, an integer value. 
and 3 is also integer value. So if I divide an integer with an integer, I will also get an integer. So in order to fix that, I will make one of these uh, variables, uh, one of sorry, one of these values as a double value. So if I divide a double with an integer value, the resulting answer is going to be double as well. So now in order to check that, I compile example 3 and then I uh, run example 3 with the value 1 and it has still not given me the proper uh, solution. So most likely this is because I have to uh, convert, I have to divide 4.0 by 3.0 and that should effectively give me the uh, the volume so I go back I make this 3.0 I well, most likely is because no I don't think that was the issue I think the issue was I did not save this so now I, uh, I save this uh, save this uh, uh, file I go back I compile and then uh, I compile again, I run again and now you can see that the, the area of circle is 3.14 and the volume of sphere is 4.18 so this uh, tells us two things the first thing is that um, if you divide a double with an integer the resulting answer is going to be a double but if you divide an integer with an integer the resulting answer is going to be an integer um, so this will solve uh, the issue that we were having um, but uh, there was another issue the another issue is, was that I made changes to the file but I forgot to save the file so that caused the confusion and that is why I did not get the proper answer okay so this uh, ends uh, the uh, this ends uh, the three examples for this lecture uh, now uh, you should come to the lab and perform these uh, examples and the rest of the examples that are given in the lab uh, in the which uh, has been put on LMS so you can download the lab and do the exercises whenever you come to uh, the lab session and uh, most likely you will kind of run into errors and I will be there to solve those errors so uh, so I'll see you in class and uh, hopefully uh, this is going to be an interesting session for you guys.